So the goal of this video is not only to go over the concepts, but then also to make sure that you're clear on the scoring guidelines. So let's look at question number one. It says metal air cells are a relatively new type of portable energy source consisting of a metal anode, an alkaline electrolyte paste that contains water, and a porous cathode membrane that lets in oxygen from the air. A schematic of the cell is shown above, reduction potentials for the cathode, and three possible metal anodes are given in the table below. In A, it says early forms of metal air cells used zinc as the anode. Zinc oxide is produced as the cell operates according to the overall equation below, and it gives that to you. Using the data in the data table above, calculate the cell potential for the zinc air cell. So if you look, zinc is going to be one of your reactants, and oxygen is going to be your other one. So I know that oxygen needs to be one of my reactants, so I know I need to use that first reaction there, and that's what where reduction is going to happen, right? Because oxygen is being reduced. The other reaction I'm going to use is the second one, but I'm going to take that and I'm going to flip that reaction because zinc needs to be a reactant. So zinc is going to be oxidized while oxygen is being reduced. So to find the cell potential, I need to take plus 0.34, and then I need, since I need to flip the bottom one, right, that second reaction, that's going to become positive 1.31. And so all I have to do is add those cell potentials together and that will give me my answer, which is 1.65. All right. In II, it says the electrolyte paste contains hydroxide ions. On the diagram above, draw an arrow to indicate the direction of migration of hydroxide ions through the electrolyte as the cell operates. So we have to think about what's happening. Okay, so I'm gonna go back really quickly Let's look at this here, all right? So remember we said zinc is being oxidized, which means it's gonna go from being Zn atoms to zinc ions. So it is producing a positive charge where that anode is. So you're getting more and more positive charge. Well, in order to counteract that, notice here I don't actually have a salt bridge, but that's what hydroxide is effectively doing. It is going to counterbalance that extra positive charge so that means hydroxide is gonna to move to the left. So you would need to draw an arrow to the left since zinc ions are being produced. We want no overall change in charge, okay? In B, it says a fresh zinc air cell is weighed on an analytical balance before being placed in a hearing aid for use. As the cell operates, does the mass of the cell increase, decrease, or remain the same? Well, the answer is increase, okay? And other than writing increase, which you get 1.4, don't write anything else because in II, it asks you to justify your answer in terms of the equation for the overall cell reaction. Well, since oxygen is reacting with zinc, as that reaction proceeds, the overall reaction, remember, is oxygen reacting with zinc to produce zinc oxide. Since you're taking zinc solid and producing zinc oxide solid, Zinc oxide solid has more mass than just zinc itself, so that's why the mass would increase. In C, it asks, the zinc air cell is taken to the top of a mountain where the air pressure is lower. Will the cell potential be higher, lower, or the same as the cell potential at the lower elevation? So if you think about it, remember, oxygen is one of your reactants, and by decreasing the air pressure, we are effectively decreasing the amount of oxygen that is reacting, okay? So if you think about this in terms of Le Chatelier's principle, remember it would shift to the left to make up for that loss. Since we're not gonna be talking about shifting though, we need to be talking about Q and K. What you would say is since Q is gonna be larger than K, since you've reduced the amount of reactant, that means that it's going to proceed towards the reactant side which means if you're proceeding to the reactant side, that means that your cell potential would decrease in magnitude. Okay, so first of all, it's gonna be lower. And notice it doesn't want an explanation why you just get one point for the answer. And then it says justify your answer. Well, that's because since you decrease the amount of reactant, okay, your Q is gonna be larger than your K, which means that the cell potential, since you're proceeding towards the reactants, your cell potential is going to decrease. So you got one point for justification, talking about Q um, or the inertia equation, which we didn't go over, so talk about Q. Okay, 
Okay? In D, it says metal air cells need to be lightweight for many applications. In order to transfer more electrons with a smaller mass, sodium and calcium are investigated as potential anodes. A one gram anode of which of these metals would transfer more electrons? assuming that the anode is totally consumed during the lifetime of a cell. So we need to take one gram of each of these, sodium and calcium, and figure out the number of moles of electrons. So I've got to go from grams of each of them into moles, and then from moles into moles of electrons. So notice for sodium, I'm going to go from one gram of sodium into moles of sodium. And then because for the sodium to become an ion, one electron is involved, it's going to be one mole of electron for every one mole of sodium. In contrast, for calcium, it's going to be the same thing except now instead of one mole of electron, it's going to be two moles of electrons. And so when you get your two answers, the answer is going to be calcium since it produces more electrons. So you got one point for the correct calculation of moles of sodium and calcium, and then one point for taking one versus two moles of electrons, right? For, choosing, for noticing that calcium has two moles of electrons for every one mole of calcium. Okay, so that was worth two points. In E, it says, the only common oxide of zinc has a formula zinc oxide. Write the electron configuration of zinc in its ground state. So this should be pretty easy. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10. Or you could write the shorthand, which would be argon in brackets, 4s2, 3d10. And you got one point for the correct con electron configuration. In II, it says, from which sublevel are electrons removed when a zinc atom in the ground state is oxidized? Well, you know that. It's whichever is the highest energy level, so that would be from 4S.